Intel has recently come out with a massive announcement with their new graphics card architecture, which they're naming DG2, then Arc, and then naming it now Alchemist. I mean, names are changing faster than politicians change policies, though rumors suggest quarter one 2022 could be the year of Intel. And in today's video, we are going to discuss why they could deliver on the hype and the incentive behind it goes much deeper than just gaming. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. So first of all, the GPUs. We're all waiting desperately for graphics cards. Miners are still buying the current RTX 3000 and RX 6000 series cards at prices that are still higher than what gamers on average are prepared to pay on the open market. The price differential between say a 3060 Ti LHR and a 3060 Ti V1 will illustrate this point perfectly. Though Alchemist, which is the first serious architecture to be released from Intel, where previously they did release the DG1 to system integrators, which before it was even released, was never hyped to be a competitor at all, I think the purpose of DG1 was just establishing logistics. However, the juicy details of the upcoming Alchemist have it rumored to be offering two different die size variants, spread across five different base models over four different VRAM configurations. That is four gigabytes, six gigabytes, eight gigabytes, and 16 gigabytes. Maximum performance on their flagship model is rumored to be similar to that of an RTX 3070 and RX 6700 XT from AMD. And this is where Intel is going to aim straight out of the gate, according to strong rumors. And with TSMC's 6 nanometer process in play, this is perfectly achievable. The brains behind this too is something to pay close attention to. Raja Kaduri, who was poached by Intel back in 2017, since then has had amplitude of both budget and time to work on this architecture. Though the poaching has also taken away talent from Nvidia and added it to the Intel balance sheet. Tom Peterson, who in a recent episode of The Full Nerd over at PC World, stated that the DG2 would have roughly 1.5x the performance boost from the architecture alone over DG1 and also 1.5x more clock speed, giving away some crucial information to kind of guesstimate the performance, so to speak, on the gaming side of things. So let's just do that. However, this is going to be extremely tricky and disclaimer, these numbers could be quite far off as it is like comparing apples to oranges, especially since DG1 is drastically different to Alchemist in a variety of ways. Though on the other hand, last time we predicted RTX 3000 series numbers, we were pretty much smack bang on the money here at Tech yes City. Though, the method I am using to predict performance is going to relate to small big scaling and percentage increases after that. And in fact, since we have some similarities here between both these jumps, it could give us somewhat of an accurate prediction. So let's go with a GPU like the GT 1030 DDR4 edition, since it is using the same DDR4 memory as the DG1, and we'll compare that to the RTX 3070 die size wise. Now DG1 has a die size of 95mm squared, and the big alchemist on DG2 is reported to have a die size of 396mm squared. That is roughly 17.37 times the increase from the DG1 GPU that was released on the market. The GT1030 has 74mm squared versus the 392.5mm squared on the RTX 3070. This gives us roughly 32.2 times the increase. Though the performance increase between the GT1030 DDR4 and the DG1 for pure gaming is roughly 1.65x where the DG1 was about 65% faster than the DDR4 GT1030 variant in pure gaming performance. It comes well ahead in synthetics, however, take for example, Fire Strike Extreme. The GT1030 DDR4 version scores roughly 1000 points in this benchmark, whereas the DG1 scores roughly 2400 points. This in synthetics equals a 2.4x increase versus the 1.65x increase in gaming. For me, this means either of two things, or a combination of both. Nvidia's architecture, at least versus DG1, is better optimized for gaming or robust driver optimization for gamers or robust driver optimization for games is still lacking on Intel's side. Being their first dedicated major release for gamers, I would say the truth lies somewhere in a combination of both. So then, how much faster is now the RTX 3070 than the GT1030 DDR4 version? 
1000 points versus 8200 points on Fire Strike Extreme now shows the GPU die scaling certainly isn't linear even with generational improvements to both clock speed and efficiency between these two architectures. However, we get a true scalar of 0.56 between the bump in size versus the performance of the die. The 2400 verse, insert big question mark here, let's apply some math. 0.56 times 17.37 times 2400 and we get a score of roughly 24,000 points. And that is roughly where I'm predicting Intel's raw Fire Strike Extreme score could come in at. Now converted back into gaming figures at dividing the two into each other, further dividing the 65% difference, it leaves the Alchemist at roughly 80% of the RTX 3070 or roughly a 25% gain to the RTX 3070. This puts it somewhere in between an RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. However, this is where I think Alchemist will pick up significantly. DG1 optimizations for gaming versus DG2 will have substantial headroom to be gained as opposed to the GT 1030 on Pascal versus the RTX 3070 on Ampere, Nvidia were already optimizing drivers extremely well by the time both architectures were already released. Furthermore, TSMC's 6 nanometer could be the edge that Intel needs to close this gap, though ultimately my prediction will fall in that of being slightly faster than a 3060 Ti on release. I do hope for more, but the number crunching is what it is. Mass first, opinion second. A lot of people must be wondering, and this is the most ambiguous point of all, since the gaming market has already been destroyed by cryptocurrency mining, what will the mining performance be like? This is one area where I wouldn't even hazard a guess, though either way, it can only be a good thing. And let me explain why. If Intel hits the market for miners, then that will free up the pre-existing cards on the market and create lower prices for those said cards, meaning gamers will win versus the current situation we have now. Though on the other hand, if the mining performance is bad, then gamers will buy up the Intel cards for gaming. So this can only be good news regardless of which way it goes. Though if the max theoretical performance is anything to go by, then Intel's architecture will unfortunately, I feel, favor hash rate performance. Since the next important point is Intel having a massive focus on data compute performance, aka GPGPU compute. Make no mistake, Nvidia releasing ray tracing and DLSS for gamers was only so they could utilize professional RT cores and AI processing cores on their GPUs instead of letting them go to waste. It was merely a synergy brought on from the business to business aspect of their market. Intel also has a massive focus on AI and ray tracing processing, and this spans from the high performance compute market of their cards. Their touted flagship data compute card is said to have 45 teraflops of performance, making it 2x faster than Nvidia and AMD solutions on the market. And since this technology is scaling down to the gaming line of cards, then I feel like Intel's cards will work in a similar fashion for their gaming line of product, just like Nvidia's release of their RTX 3000 and 2000 series cards. Though the final piece of news to talk about is Intel's direction. I feel like years of stagnation are done and they're finally ready to bring some real competition and innovation to the market. The 12900K leaks already show it being reportedly faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X in a variety of benchmarks, which would give Intel the same leapfrog transition they saw back in the Core 2 Duo days of release. Intel has shown that they are more than capable in a single generation of completely turning the tables, though as always, the tactics they use is open for debate. Though it seems they are finally ready to bring the battle on two fronts, the CPU and GPU, and I as an enthusiast welcome it, and honestly, I'm somewhat excited for the upcoming releases of both Alder Lake and Alchemist and what they will bring. As for their other technologies like Excess, the more the better, bring it on Intel. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also hit that sub and ring the bell if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content. Also let us know in the comment section below, are you getting excited for Alder Lake or Intel's Alchemist GPUs? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, we do have the question of the day here, which comes from Andrew Rochelle. And they ask, by the way, why are you buying SATA H disk drives and not SSDs? So in the recent parts hunt, we did buy a heap of hard drives. I actually regularly buy 
used hard disk drives. And the reason being is because when a lot of people buy gaming PCs, especially the more budget friendly gaming PCs you make, you just put a 120 gigabyte SSD in, chuck a two terabyte hard drive in, and a lot of people can still load their games up on those two terabyte drives. And that brings the cost down. If I was to put in a, say a two terabyte SSD into a $500 gaming PC, that would then raise the price up to a thousand dollars. And of course, a lot of people would just look at the specs and go, this thousand dollar PC isn't worth it. So SATA hard disk drives, especially for gamers, still hold a very, very good value proposition. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.